Welcome back to Broadway. It's Alex Belfield back on 42nd Street at the fabulous Foxwood Theatre. It's a new theatre that's home to a brand new production. It's two years old now. It's had ups and downs, and I saw it Saturday night, and it is spectacular. It's Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark, and the two stars are Reeve Carney. How are you? I'm great. you got an awesome voice. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. So have you, by the way. And Rebecca Falkenbury, who is Mary Jane in the show. How are you both? I'm fantastic. Thank you. Firstly, I've got to say to you, congratulations on this show. It has had so much press over the last two years, which I think has only helped in feeding people's interest in it. I mean, they genuinely seem to want to know what is it like, what is it going to be, and then you come and you're blown away by the spectacle of it. It is enormous, isn't it? It is enormous. I think one of the challenges for me was to figure out whether I was supposed to compete with that spectacle or somehow keep it grounded, and I think in the end I found that uh, Rebecca and my job is to kind of keep it grounded for the most part because there is so much crazy bonkers stuff happening all, all the time which is great it's awesome and I love your character Peter Parker because we have so much in common because we're both sort of dorks and outsiders trying to fit in I'm ginger you, you sort of see where I'm coming from <laughs> why are you laughing Rebecca? no at all I was going to say you could be I finished school in Glasgow I was saying you could be up in Scotland <laughs> yeah there you go yeah I think I mean I've experienced all different uh aspects of what I have to do on stage, I guess, in my real life. I think the closest I get to Spider-Man is when I'm on stage with my band. Uh, that's probably the closest I've ever gotten to that sort of feeling of power. Um, but I definitely experienced a lot of the stuff in high school that Peter Parker experienced, or even earlier than that sometimes. I've always been somewhat naive in some ways and, and like to kind of hold on to a certain... Uh, innocence I guess um, which I think I try to bring to the character of Peter Parker because I kind of see that in him and of course Rebecca you're the cutie patootie that everybody falls in love with including the man I himself so. <laughs> I, I try to be the red wig helps it does indeed. So let's talk about this show then. What it is, it's a kid at school who turns into this superhero and he's sort of torn between saving the planet and falling in love. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I guess for, I think Peter Parker's struggle somewhat is between responsibility and desire. You know, we all have that. We have things that we desire that may or may not be good for us or for the world at large. And so his goal and his uh, you know, task, I guess, is to find out how to merge those two things and I think by the end of this musical he kind of you see that he's on the track on the path to figuring out how to do that and with the greatest respect I've seen everything on Broadway and I have never seen an actor work so hard physically <laughs> acting wise vocally than you since probably okay. Nathan Lane in the producers oh, I mean they get their money's worth out of you don't they I appreciate that very much I I, I love working you know I'm, I'm especially at, at this job um, and I, I'm just grateful to have an amazing and an incredibly fun job in the arts. Um, so I I never take it for granted. So I'm glad that it it comes across that I'm putting forth energy. <laughs> and tell me, Rebecca, about you and being in the show and having all that behind you and the music and everything else. Is there anything more thrilling? It's pretty fantastic getting to perform on such a huge stage in front of such a huge audience. Where the biggest or definitely one of the biggest the biggest, the biggest yeah. yeah theater on Broadway and stage wise and audience wise and. I think what we were talking about before, Arie was saying to keep our characters grounded, that was kind of ingrained in me when I was being directed into the show, that to not get caught up in the enormity of it and become these cartoon characters, because although we are technically coming out of a cartoon, we have to keep realism, and cause that's what helps people fall in love with our love story and sort of stand behind us and want us to win in the end. And again, I saw the show Saturday night, sellout crowd, and an amazing atmosphere in the theatre. And what I love That's about Broadway... That's a crazy audience, oh, right? Yeah, that that was, audience was crazy on it's, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, there were there was a school group from Indiana that night, and I always love it. When there are 16, 17-year-old girls, that's sort of the, the... Because they love him very, very well. <laughs> I was like, you better be careful at stage door. <laughs> They're just really responsive, uh, you know, in, in terms of the level of volume um, that they produce with their voices, which is good for uh, for actors, because we, we like to feel like people are having a good time, and it's nice when you can hear that. Obviously, sometimes people are silent and they actually are having a great time, but it's, it's always... A little... Every now and then to hear the vocal appreciation yeah. is nice. I don't get little boys screaming. Well, not little boys. Fifteen-year-old boys. They don't. They don't squeal quite the same as for yeah. me as they do. For what me. is it like to be hot, Reeve, and to have girls fancy you? This is another emotion I've never felt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, Reeve, I try. You know, like. I think it's wonderful. I mean, I'm. I. I, I just love. Um, 
He's quite Paz. a stylish man. You can't tell on the radio, but he wears suspenders and he has very cool boots. He's, he's quite stylish. you got some stylish. cool shoes too. Those are amazing. Yeah, these are what I call my showbiz shoes and I bought these in New York and the shop that I bought them from is now closed like every other store that I seem to love in this town. Oh, yeah, that It's frustrating, isn't it? It's hard to keep businesses going here. Ex- rents are very expensive. Yeah. Uh, I went into a fur store today just because I, I thought, oh, it's on 30th Street. It looked like it might be kind of like a cheaper fur store. I don't even wear fur because I'm allergic to it. <laughs> but I wanted to ask what the price was like. And he said, well, anything from uh, 5000 to 100000 I'm like, are you kidding me? Like on 30th Street? Because who's going to go back home to somewhere like in Michigan and be like, oh, yeah, don't you, I bought this on 30th Street like for a hundred grand? Like who, who's going to... people from Michigan sound like. <laughs> well, yeah, that was more like an Indian. That was like, accent. yeah, Michigan, Japan, something like that. <laughs> Price and this show, I mean, had controversy from the beginning because you had you two behind it. You had you two as the stars. You had this amazing set and technically brilliant stuff going on that, of course, is going to have teething problems. Um, you get through all of that, and as we sit here two years on, how does it feel to have weathered the storm and still being sellout? And of course, the show now is as brilliant as it could be. Oh, you know, I mean, there were definitely some hard times in terms of uh, go, you know, the preview process, but I think. With any great struggle, generally the light at the end of the tunnel is that much more rewarding. So I think that's the way I feel about it. I'm, I'm really glad to be in the show now. I was happy to be in it then, but you know, looking back on what we went through, it's, 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 I feel very fortunate to be involved in the show at this point in the run. There's nothing more magical than hearing word on the street and gossip and people talking and talking. Is it going to work? Isn't it? It only feeds to the success of the show ultimately because people want to be part of it. Well, I was going to say with that, I think a testament to how good the show is. I think it's, when all the press was really happening around the preview period and when it first opened, go and see if the show has a hold and if someone's stuck in the air flying. And I think that caused a lot of people to come because they just wanted to see if there would be a train wreck, which fortunately there never really was. <laughs> but you had the holds. And now that we've gotten past all that and now it runs really smoothly, people are still coming and hordes of people. And I think that, but that's just because the show is good because it's a really great show. You're not going to come and see a hold or see anything technically malfunction usually because that doesn't really happen anymore. Right, and as a geeky guy that's seen 15 years of theatre, to, to look up and see a guy on two wires flying in between another guy on two wires that then flies that's above cool. another guy on yeah. two wires, it just only plays with the brain. I mean, it's no wonder there were teething problems. The stuff that this show attempts is beyond anything else I've seen in a theatre. I mean, the only comparison is Mary Poppins flies out the end, but it's one woman flying slowly. I mean, you guys are throwing yourselves at each other and in fact even jumping on each other's back in the air on 16,000 wires yeah <laughs> it is pretty nice I do justice then is that <laughs> yeah definitely and then I'm thinking of another number that I do called bouncing off the walls um, that's pretty intense as well because they're actually I think eight dancers controlling the walls and it looks from the audience that it's maybe mechanical like it's some sort of computerized thing but you have to, it's sort of this high level of partnering in dance where, you know because you, you they can move the walls wherever they want, and I'm pretty much going to be in the same place. So uh, they're very skilled, these guys. I mean, obviously they're skilled dancers, but they've become skilled puppetry masters as well with these huge, heavy walls. So yeah, there's a lot of that stuff with people crossing lines and you know, bumping into each other in the air. It's, it's part of the excitement. And then, of course, you go from the enormity of those flight scenes to just you and him sat on a bench in midair, just singing a beautiful ballad, which is so favorite. nice and probably the best song in the show. Well, it is the best oh. song in the show, no doubt. That is my favorite scene to do in the show. And I think it's because sometimes you can get lost in scenes on stage and you forget that there's an audience there uh, and you get lost in your character and whatever the situation is going on. But specifically in that scene because we're hanging in the middle of the air because it's so dark around us and we're quite sickly you can't go anywhere (laughs) because you're hanging in the air and you're harnessed to the back of the fire escape it is just like this beautiful little moment that we get in this enormous vibrant musical and it's so simple and like you said the song is beautiful and I always say for the Peter Parkers, it's like a lesson in listening (laughs) because they just, it's such a long song, which I sing most of it. And they just, they're so still and they just listen. And I just get to tell this story through this song. And I think that's probably why it's my favorite. And congratulations to you both, but particularly to you, Rebecca, because I mean, it is the one song in the show that you remember that you think, my God, they can sing. And and you do need a moment like that because this is very high energy through most of it and so stunningly spectacular visually that you can often be distracted from the voice or anything else going on. 
Yeah, I think it's because it uses a lighter voice. I think, especially in Reeves' sort of big 11 o'clock numbers, you think, oh my God, he's got a crazy voice and it's so loud and it's so powerful. And because it's so simple and it takes a bit, pairs it back a bit, that I think you notice the melody of it all. Yeah, well, the thing for me is that, I mean, I actually have an alternate in this show, so I only perform in six shows a week, which is I'm very happy about and very <laughs> I'm lucky to have that. Jake Epstein does the matinee performances, um, so I'm, I'm here in the building. We're each other's standbys when we're not on, but a, a few shows do this. I think Evita and Phantom of the Opera do it and Jesus Christ Superstar, different shows where it requires a lot of physical... Um, there are a lot of physical mm -hmm. demands on the performer. They sometimes have an alternate, which is my situation. So I'm... I'm still pretty exhausted after after the uh, the week, but I don't know if I'd be still standing doing eight eight of these a week. If you start to get tired, then you're trying to flip upside down and sing, and it would all just be really hard to do. <laughs> and of course, from a guy's point of view, as you watch this, you don't get to do much flying right until the end. And then we're thinking, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Because we get lots of Spider-Men throughout. And then you become the Spider-Man as we see at the end. And we're all thinking, God, I'd love to have a go at that. I mean, there can't be a yeah. guy in the audience who doesn't think, what does that feel like to be flying above an audience? It was cool for me because like, the stuff that I had to learn first, like bouncing off the walls and the thing I do with Arachne in the air, those are a lot harder than flying around in the audience, the, at least the flight that I do. Um, so by the time I got to do that, it was just pure joy, as I'm sure it looks. It's it's <laughs> like being in a roller coaster without a roller coaster. You just are completely free. And, it, you know, it requires a bit of thinking. You have to have good body awareness so that you don't start spinning around in the wires because you can do that. But, um, but yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. It's a great feeling flying around. I also sat there thinking, where do you go from here? I mean, you're in probably the most spectacular show on Broadway. I can't think of anything bigger. Um, there are some great shows here, but visually it's stunning. Um, and you get to sing and you get to dance and you get to act brilliantly. Um, it's hard to leave this. Is that why you've been in it so long? So this is my top, you're saying. I'm peeking well, at this I'm just moment. wondering. I mean, <laughs> I, I often wonder that. Once you've been Oprah Winfrey, once you've been Letterman, once you've been Spider-Man, I mean, it's tough to find another gig that's going to thrill you. I suppose you have to go the other way and do something very intimate and small because how else could you top this? Well, everyone says, what will you do next? And I always say, I don't know because it hasn't presented itself or haven't had the audition yet. I think as creative, artistic people... Uh, at least for me personally, it's always what's the next thing that's going to challenge me? What is some creative thing I haven't done yet that I will find exciting? And as you could hear, we are in the theatre. They are rehearsing. They are getting ready for the show. I would imagine backstage is as much fun as in front of the stage. I almost want to see that show because there's a lot moving in and out, isn't there? Yeah, I think there are 200 people working backstage. It's something crazy like that. Am I right? I think it's more like 150, 150. but still. Including <laughs> ushers, I guess. It's like 200 yeah. in the building at yeah, one yeah. time. So there's definitely a lot, there are a lot of things going on that no one in the audience sees. <laughs> you have to be very aware backstage. You can't just walk wherever you want because someone might be landing from a flight or a scenery piece will be coming in and out and everything is very well choreographed in the timing of when it needs to go and when things, when people can walk. So you can't just meander backstage yeah. ever. <laughs> and of course you're both delicious in your own way. You more so, Rebecca, than you, Reeve, but I'll leave it there. Oh, um, it. We're in a town full of food, and I'm just wondering, you, you really can't indulge, can you? Because if you were fat, I mean, it wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> well, I'm so lucky, man. I mean, this job keeps me fit. I, uh, I do... He's got serious abs. He's got a proper six-pack, which he said <laughs> he didn't have before, but now... So have I. I'm just acting to look chubby. I'm, I know you do. I can tell. <laughs> well, I mean, I definitely... Uh, before the show, I, I kind of keep my diet relatively consistent. Um, I eat a chicken salad before like every all show. all the time, right? How I dull. You say you have it all every, the time. Yeah, every sh before every show, I, that's what I have. But I'm so I, bored for you. I know. that. I mean, that's, that's good. I, I enjoy it, though, and I, but I put, like... I put avocado in it and a few other different things. But you heard about the stuffed artichoke at Carmine's. I mean, now no, there's no, no. a pre-show well, dinner. The thing. I, after the show, I eat whatever I want. And I also eat whatever I want for breakfast. So it's only that one meal that I keep uh, relatively um, lean. And how about you? How do you keep this? Uh, it's unfortunately a lot of diet and exercise, which I'm not always fond of. But I found... In the shows I'd done before this, I danced quite a bit. And I always thought, well, I can't eat a lot between shows because then I'll have to dance around and then I'll feel sick to my stomach. But I always forget how much I use my stomach muscles and my diaphragm and everything when I'm singing. Right. So in this show, even the same if I don't have like a salad or a soup or something really light between shows, just all the heavy breathing I do to support my voice when I'm singing, I'll feel sick anyway. Yep. So it's 
just an unfortunate part of having to do a show. You have to be mindful of when you eat and how soon you eat before the show and what you eat. Well, go and treat yourself to a burger or something. I, I had one last night. I really eat ha- I eat hamburgers way too often. <laughs> and he eats chocolate all the time because on the fire escape, he'll come and he'll have I chocolate do. in the corners of his mouth. <laughs> I can't imagine how many calories. It's a, it's a scientific <laughs> test worth doing to find out how many calories you get through in the show. It's got to be thousands, I'm literally. I'm guessing. I, I, I was assuming it was at least 1,200 that you burn through. I'm not sure. I think I probably consume between 3,200 and 4,000 calories a day. Whoa. I think. I can do that just watching Letterman late night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all <laughs> yeah. those snacks. Guys, thank you so much for talking to me. If you want to see a visual spectacular and we fall in love with you, Rebecca, and then you have to try and convince us that it's right for you to fall in love with him, yeah. we won't give the ending away, but I mean, we can sort of guess what happens. Congratulations. Such a beautiful voice and performance. And of course, for you, Reeve, um, magnificent. I mean, seriously impressive to keep that up for two and a half hours and the energy you bring to the show. And, and I mean, the girls just love you. You're right. All that cheering and screaming, it makes me virtually sick. I mean, it's not nice for a man's ego, but... No, I, you just have to keep things in perspective, I guess. Uh, I'm, it's just nice when people uh, are happy to see you, I guess. I'm, I'm <laughs> and they are at the stage door. <laughs> Everyone wants a picture. Talking of which, we better get a picture done now because I'll leave you in peace just before the show. Have a great one tonight. At Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark is here at the Foxwood Theatre. It's on 42nd Street. I mean, how much more perfect could this be? A beautiful theatre on the, well, the most famous street in the world, really, Broadway and 42nd. I guess you're right, huh? Uh, Reeve Carney, thank you so much. He plays Peter Parker here at uh, Spider-Man and, of course, the gorgeous Rebecca. Thank you so much for talking to me and uh, good luck with the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much.